Hello, very glad to have you here. I'm very excited to get into the book of Ephesians with you today, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so this letter is addressed to the church in the city of Ephesus, capital of the Roman province of Asia, which was Asia Minor or modern Turkey. The letter was written by Paul from prison in Rome sometime between AD 60 and AD 62 and therefore is often referred to as an, a prison epistle, along with Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. And uh, that's all the background I'm gonna give. There's a lot of information on the backgrounds of books available. Let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, verse one. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Okay, so right off the bat, some thinking cap verses right there. The topic of predestination continues to rage in the church today. And honestly, one of the reasons I started doing a Bible study was because I started seeing a lot of YouTubers giving their interpretations of scripture they did not seem to match up with what the text was saying. The scriptures alone are the word of God. And I began getting a little irritated and frustrated by statements being made that really didn't have uh, scriptural or contextual support. Even in my own studies, I have a few commentaries from individuals who have been incredibly faithful to God's word over their lives. But even when I use those, I always examine it with what the text is saying, including other verses, especially from the Old Testament, where the meaning may derive from. It's a study most of you are familiar with called hermeneutics um, that seeks to pull out the author's intent. And that being said, let's look at verses four through six once more from a pure Greek translation, which I have on the screen here, um, to see how it was originally written. Just as he actually for himself has chosen us inside himself before the conception of the world, for us to be holy and faultless before the presence of him by God love, having by his choice predetermined us for adoption through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the God good intention of his will, to full praise of glory of his grace, wherein he has made us highly favored among those now being made God loving. And to me, it sounds incredibly clear that these individuals of this church in Ephesus were selected and adopted into God's family before the world was created. That's what it says, and let's think that over as we uh, carry on throughout our Bible readings. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined or predetermined in the Greek, according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. And that is actually a really good translation right there. In fact, most of the time, the NASB version that I use does do a really good job translating Greek into understandable English. But at times there are misses in my opinion, which I always try to point out to you guys. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. 
Verses 13 and 14 here are two great verses to memorize if you ever feel insecure about your salvation. Okay, verse 15. For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And reminder that a saint is just a Christian, it's not a special Christian. Verse 19, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Okay, we'll start now with a bang. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray this out. Lord, sometimes it's a challenge for people to remember that you're the potter and we're the clay, and that if you had a plan from the get-go, so be it. Help us to not only acknowledge this truth, but that you are good in all your ways, whether we can understand it or not. Personally, I think the struggle people have with words like elect, predestined, and sealed that we continue seeing throughout our readings is that it takes the control away from humans it also makes people think, hey, it's not fair that this guy was chosen, but this guy wasn't, which begs for the assumption that a human could somehow get himself right with you over time, which is also against what your word teaches. Your word tells us that there is no one besides Christ on earth who is righteous. In fact, I'm going to read a few verses for us to reflect upon in our prayer with you um, about your sovereign role as Redeemer and Savior. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11, it says, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, by which we must be saved. And finally, in 1 John uh, 1, verse 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So remind and help us, Lord, to be at peace with the truth that you are the author and perfecter of salvation, and that by your will, you have reasons for your plans that we all need to trust. On this note, I want to pray for more illumination and clarity of the truths of your scripture and understanding in proper context for all members of your true church alive today. Please rebuke and remove false teachers and continue training and discipling more pastors and church congregations with a true and solid exposition of your word. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, that's a great one to think about today, and uh, continue praying if you like. I hope to see you tomorrow, and God bless you. Take care.